it also shows that the UPND government and the ministers are not reading. The Minister of Legal Affairs or Minister of Justice, the Minister of Finance, all the technical rights around the State House, around the President, are not doing their job. Why have so many special aids to the President and Detika cannot help us? And that's an embarrassment on the head of state. You cannot do that. If anything, if there's one head which they should have analyzed and looked at critically, it was the State House head. That's the optimum of governance in this country. And they, they want to just, uh, you know, um, frown upon it and not take the necessary decisions and, and so on. So colleagues from the media, you must take these issues very seriously. When we bring up such issues, how did the entire machinery not detect that uh, the constitutional provisions, which were the yellow book is fair and true, are not and for it? And I'm sure if I was the president, heads would rock because that is embarrassing the president. You cannot embarrass the president in that fashion. You can't. We've got senior members of parliament who keep on dancing on the floor of the house every day, but they cannot take attention to detail. That is totally, totally unacceptable. So for me, the MPs from, from TF and other independents who, who, who stood up and, uh, and, and took that action yesterday, I want to commend them and we say that's how it should be. That is why the people elected you to go in that house, is to ensure that you pay special attention to details. Fast forward. The fourth issue that I would like to discuss with you today is the issue of the Minister of Home Affairs. Yesterday on the floor of the House, the Minister of Home Affairs, Honorable Jack Mwindu, stood up trying to lecture to us that talking about the president in the negative, talking about the president in the negative is a crime under the Constitution of Zambia and people can get arrested. I was shocked that Honorable Jack Mumbu would want to use the floor of the House to intimidate us. We shall not be intimidated, colleagues. Yeah. Mm. Not today, not tomorrow. We have had enough of these intimidations from UPND. We shall not take it. If they want, they can arrest all of us. We are not afraid of being arrested. I am not afraid of being arrested. I'm ready to go and sit in jail for as long as it makes them happy. Jack Mwimbu should not use the floor of the house or the recently acquired powers to intimidate us. It's not me who said that if I'm elected in two office at 10 hours by 14 hours, I'll sell the jet to pay for the student fees. It's not me who said if I'm elected at 10 hours and soon in the afternoon, the, rate, the exchange rate of the kwacha will go to, to, to $10, to ten kwacha to a dollar. It's not us in the PF who said that the price of millimil is going to be due to 50 kwacha. It's not us in the PF who said the price of fertilizer is coming to 200 kwacha. We are not, and it was himself. And they said, if you elect us, within this period, this will be done. Within this period, it will be done. What normal people do when you over promise you must go back and apologize mm. sorry colleagues we didn't know what we were getting into we made false promises please give us a bit more space that's what reasonable people do you do not accuse others that they're insulting you when you are the one who is lying you lie and the problem with these characters in UPND they have no shame of lying they will lie in the morning they lie in the afternoon, they lie in the... And the tragedy of lying is, once you tell one lie, you have to tell two more lies to cover the first lie. Once you tell two lies, you have to tell four more lies to cover the first two lies. That's what the problem is. The Zambian people are waiting. And do not, do not tell us that we should give them time. The honeymoon is over. 100 days, the honeymoon is over. And it was them who promised the so many things that they said they were going to implement, they were going to do in such and such a period. We never put a gun to their heads. Did the Zambians put a gun to the heads of the UPND that promised us this under this time frame? The answer is no. So 
they should not and i understand and, and and i repeat they should not continue with this intimidation if somebody is lied his name is a liar that's what it is if you are lying you are a liar and it's not an insult if you are not telling the truth it means you are a liar the other day we had the president himself talking about contracts he said no those characters in parliament should not even talk they should be ashamed for talking because they connived between ministers and permanent secretaries to award contracts to themselves and they failed to perform come on what kind of advisors has the president got does he understand the process of procurement Is he able to name those ministers who connived with the permanent secretaries? I was a minister for Lapla province. There was no single day that we connived with the permanent secretary for any contract. So why should, if one or two people are contractors, why should if they be lumped, why should all be, we, we, should, we all be lumped together? It's not fair. It's not unacceptable. Some of us did our level best to ensure that we executed the mandates of our office with dignity and honor. Yes, yes, yes. And we don't expect that coming from the president. Mm. What we expect to come from the president is to say, colleagues who did very well in this particular area, in this particular area, those who did not do well, we shall see how we can improve on. That's what we say. That's what leadership and statesmanship entails that he should be doing. Does it mean that if you're a former minister, or you are from the PF, you have no right to do business in this country? Was President HH not doing business when he was in the opposition? Did anyone of you ever hear that the PF have blacklisted so and so and so and so and so and so because they are supporting UPND? No. You remember the story of the Manyumbi target, which stood for, for, for almost three, four, five years. Who was the main contractor there? You can research. The PF never, ever at any given time stopped anybody who belonged to another political party from pursuing their, 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 their programs. We never did. Because everybody is a Zambian. Do we have all to be UPND to get contracts? Why are, UPN, why are those people aligned to PF not being paid? Why are they being blacklisted? What kind of country are they trying to create? Should we all be UPND? <laughs> the answer is no. We are a much party state, meaning that we have our own political persuasions. Just like we have our own religious persuasions. Do we have to be Catholics or SDS? The answer is no. Because if you are a watchtower or you are something else, then you cannot uh, have access to, 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 to work opportunities. The answer is no. So this trajectory which this president has taken is very dangerous and they need to refrain from it. That's a tragedy of being a failure from the first day. Because we want to divert attention. All those summations and everything, all it means is just trying to divert attention. Colleagues, if your contractor is given a contract, if your contractor is given a contract, there are all those processes. Before he even signed that contract, there are what they call performance bonds. Meaning that if you do not execute or you default, the government will not lose money because all they will do is go for your bond, go for your house, go for your machinery. If I do not have a shovel or a wheelbar to, to get a project, but I have brains, I deserve to be given a contract because I'm Zambian. If you colleagues, we are going to sit here and say the only people must get contracts in this country are those countries, are those people with money, none of you are going to rise. None. You can't run a country in that fashion. You can't. If you have the brains, you have the experience. Colleagues, if you've been in the business for 10 years as an engineer, you mean you cannot get a contract? Register a company through NCC and go ahead and get a loan? Go ahead and get a bond from insurance and get a, a contract, then it becomes a crime to President Haka in the HLMA? No ways. I call a man. Mm. I call a man. <laughs> you can't.
can't. So that is totally unacceptable and that is meant to intimidate small scale contractors. You can't do such a thing as a president. And you are even like a classroom teacher, even if you're even like a classroom teacher to your own ministers. Come on. Yeah, what is that you tell me? On what, you, what who does that? Huh? Stop behaving like a headmaster, start behaving like a president. <laughs> Last on my agenda for this morning. Colleagues, one of the issues why we lost elections was the issue of indiscipline in this organization, PF. If we do not route out indiscipline, rebranding, we can forget about rebranding. Indiscipline in this organization is one of the reasons why we are where we are today as Patriotic Front. And we can no longer continue being indisciplined. We can no longer continue running around like headless chickens. Whoever wakes up can go to TV and insult President Edgar Lung. Come on. What kind of human beings are we? Even those whose jobs was just to go and, uh, and meet the press, today they are saying that uh, 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 President Lung was not listening to them. How? How does a spokesperson become the thinks he is an advisor? Mm. Where on earth? Let's stick to our lines. It's totally unacceptable. And that nonsense will not be tolerated. Mm. For me, under my watch, discipline is number one. And because of that, I'm here by announcing today that the Lusaka Province Committee of the Patriotic Front is hereby dissolved. All issues pertaining to Lusaka province will be handled by the Secretariat. Mm. The Kennedy Kamba Committee, which has been in the forefront of insulting the President, of insulting the members of the Central Committee, which has been epitome of indiscipline, is today dissolved. Yeah. They have no single leg to stand on. They lost elections in yeah, Lusaka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today they want to determine the, 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 the the destination of this party, the future of this party. No, they lost as elections here in Lusaka. What normal people do when you lose elections is to slow down, withdraw. President Rungu has done that. He has withdrawn to go and reflect. For them, they should leave provinces that performed better to be talking. They should Lusaka should have left Luapula, Muchinga, Eastern and Northern, who performed exceedingly, even if I thought performed better than Lusaka. They should be the one talking, not the Lusaka committee. Anyway, who would want to say, yeah, PF is now nice when you hear that woman who has been ranting on social media? Who would want to associate yourself with that? Nobody. Nobody would want to associate yourself with that kind of behavior. Nobody. So we are going to clean this party. And we are going to start now with the Lusaka Committee, and this will be an ongoing program. Mm. Within the next few days, we are going to announce an interim committee who are going yeah, to take yeah, charge yeah, yeah. of the events of the event for the Lusaka province. We cannot go into Kabwata by election with that committee. Mm. Mm. Everybody will be running away from us. So we can't run an organization like that. For me, as, as long as I remain acting Secretary General of this organization, indiscipline will not be tolerated, mm -hmm. colleagues. Indiscipline will be rooted out. And today is the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we are going to go. If it will go to districts, we shall do that. Mm -hmm. How can a constituent chairman of a constituent where you lost the, the MP be the one to, to, channel the, to champion the agenda of the party? No. Come on. Ubuntu no. Nilsoni. Ubuntu mm Sony. -hmm. So we cannot allow that to continue. Intimidations will not be allowed. We are saying we want to level the playing field for everybody who wants to campaign and be the president of this party. 
But if you start intimidating them, are they going to come forward? No. You are going to intimidate quality human beings who are supposed to step forward and help us in the rebranding and running of this organization. Mm. So you can't intimidate people. Let the playing field be leveled. And for your information, for us as secretariat, we shall not support a single candidate. Because if we support a single candidate, others will stop coming to the secretariat. Yes. Yes. We want everybody to come to the secretariat. Feel free. This is their institution. So, colleagues, that is what I had to discuss with you. And mm -hmm. before I, I ask you to, to ask you questions, I will ask Honorable Rafa Nakajinda. He may have one or two issues that he will also want to share. Honorable no, thank you very much, uh, SD. Um, mine uh, is basically just to speak to one very disturbing uh, development. Um, this morning, I was besieged or were besieged by retirees, uh, apparently that were represented at some point by the current speaker of national assembly who happens to uh, at some point been alleged to have involved herself in some fraudulent activity that led to those pensioners to report her to the police and the matter was taken to court apparently the matter did not proceed because she was basically saved by a knowledge as we speak now the pensioners are shocked to find that she's trying to use hand and methods to sue the government for malicious <clears throat> prosecution when in fact she's only sitting on a knowledge. The current Attorney General, uh, Mr. Kavesha, needs to s address the nation and inform us why his office has now turned into a secret chamber to which the UPND officials and those that have been appointed to serve in UPND government are using to cleanse themselves of atrocities they may have committed before getting to government. We have heard of the president himself suing for malicious prosecution when in fact he's also sitting on a knowledge. We have heard of assistants and advisors to the president who have also sued through the Attorney General, uh, suggesting that they are claiming damages for certain acts they committed before they got into government. We know that there is an orchestrated plan to use the Office of Attorney General and Solicitor General for people to siphon money through concert judgments to cleanse themselves and also to obtain money through such fraudulent activities. We know that the president has been addressing himself to say that parliament, he has no regard to the people's assembly, maybe because he himself and his, his colleagues are guilty of what they are accusing patriotic front of. Because you cannot stay on a matter consistently calling honorable colleagues who have served this country for over 10 years, some of them, call them criminals without any evidence. A person who accuses other people consistently of something, it may just be that they are guilty themselves of those same crimes. Mm. And the evidence is what is now happening in the office of attorney general. Mm. We thought we could just address ourselves to that. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, dear colleagues. We have come to the end of our briefing. I would like to thank our acting secretary general.